Hi, I'm James, and today I'm looking at the Garmin Verb 360 uh, surround view or 360 degree action camera. And I've actually already unboxed this, so this is the unit itself. Um, you do get a basic selection of accessories in the box. So we have the action mount for it here, a traditional tripod mount here uh, for attaching it to your normal camera threaded tripod and a small tripod which can be used either to hold the camera or as a small three-legged mount which this can be fitted to um, so you can use this to carry the camera around. The camera with both these mounts fits by pressing this button on the side to widen the mount and then we it's a bit tricky from this angle but clip the camera into it as so. Um, so like I say, this mount allows you to mount it onto tripods. This one allows you to, if I just reach around, fit it to standard GoPro style mounts. So here we have an official GoPro um, suction cup mount. And if we stick that to the desk, we can see we can attach that mount and use it like we would a GoPro. So unlike a GoPro, but like the GoPro Fusion that's been introduced recently, uh, the Garmin 360, or Verb 360, ha um, has lenses on both sides. So it shoots in both directions at once. And um, basically, these lenses uh, have a more than 180 degree view. So they actually can capture sort of the angle back slightly past the camera. And where the overlap happens in this, they then try to stitch the two images together. So it does mean if something, say, is here or very close, it will get lost in the join. Um, but in my testing, say in like a car interior or something like that, it was pretty good actually. Uh, not giving a perfect join, but a reasonable job. Um, and certainly if you're outdoors and using it, it should do reasonably well if your sort of main subjects are front and back and things are, I think it says a stitch distance of about five meters will be perfect or near as perfect as possible. Um, the reason I went with this over the GoPro version, first of all I prefer the form factor a bit, just it's not so tall compared to the GoPro one. Uh, I intend to be using this in car primarily, um, so I didn't want it to be taking a lot of space up on the dashboard or in the windscreen. Um, actual size of it, here we have a GoPro Hero 4 um, with the extended battery pack on and we can see overall footprint of it is actually fairly similar. So they're a similar overall size. Um, but this does have a benefit over the GoPro version as well in that it has built in GPS. Um, so again because I'm using this in car with GPS built in I can use it to track the speed of the vehicle. Um, it also has Bluetooth, which allows me to connect it to this little uh, onboard diagnostic interface, um, which means I can monitor things like engine revs, so I've been having a play with that already. Um, I haven't used it in earnest yet, but uh, for the basics. Um, the controls on the device, so if you want to start recording, even from off, oh, sorry, yeah, even, so we flip that across and it will immediately, once it's sort of booted up, start recording. Flick it back and because the camera was off before it will turn off completely or if it was already on, it would remain on. Uh, otherwise we have three buttons on the top. Um, Power, OK, and Wi-Fi. So these are power and Wi-Fi if held, so we can turn the wireless on and off. Um, otherwise, going in, um, that one takes a photo. And otherwise, we can go through some menu settings here. So we have video mode, video, or time lapse. Then we have photo mode, so we can do single burst time lapse again. Uh, lens mode, so we can select 360, front only rear only or raw. Uh, the way 360 works is it automatically stitches a 4K video on the camera. Raw gives you the front and rear outputs and you can stitch them in the Verb Edit software. 
and that gives you an output of about 5.7k so it gives you a, a higher quality source to work with. Um, bit rates on this are quite high, I think it can be up to 120 megabits a second in raw mode according to the documentation. Uh, wireless is for setting up your, your Wi-Fi, so at the minute it's broadcasting a network that my phone can connect to. It could also connect to my home network, or we could turn the wireless off. Um, I found connecting to the home network, because I'm not that close to the router in here, um, the image quality coming through to the phone wasn't great, just because performance in this room isn't great, so I've been using the in-device network. Also, sometimes I'm outside setting up in the car, so I don't want to try to connect to the home network. Uh, the Bluetooth side, I've connected it to a headset I have, uh, so that if I'm further away from the camera but wanted to record voice, I can do that. And also the OBD2 reader for connect getting information from my car. This is to say that it mixes audio in if it's coming through on Bluetooth. Uh, and we can add a new device, but those are the only two we're going to be using. Uh, I don't have the remote, and this doesn't come with the camera. And there are other sensors as well, which you can add in, which again, I don't have, but you may have, say, a heart rate sensor or something like that. And then we have options for uh, some of the settings on it. So we have the stitch distance, voice controls. So there are actually a few voice controls on this. Um, we could say, for example, OK Garmin, start recording. And of course it doesn't work. OK Garmin, start recording. Start recording. OK Garmin, start recording. OK Garmin, start recording. OK Garmin, stop recording. There are a few other things you can do there, like use it to um, set points so by saying remember this and other things. Um, I, For my use I'm happy just using the button on the side, um, but it's interesting to have a play with and some of the options. Um, the You can turn the lights on here on and off, tones, timer for photos, whether you want the microphone spatial, rear only or off, and then some system options like turning on the GPS, frame rates, units, and so on and so forth. Uh, the SD card, so you require a U3 class SD card. I picked up a Samsung one which was 128 gigabytes, which is the maximum officially supported. I have heard 256 gig units work fine in here as well. I didn't want to spend a fortune to play around though, so I bought 128, which I believe was uh, about £36. I'll put a link to that and the camera itself on Amazon below. And then just some system info as well. Um, next up, I'm just going to take a look at the phone app for the camera. So as with most action cameras such as this, the bulk of the setup is done through a phone app. Uh, in this case we're using a OnePlus 5 uh, with the Android app. There is also obviously uh, an um, uh, iOS version available as well. And we have selections through here, so we can see we've given it a friendly name. We can quickly go through and set lens mode, stitch distance near or far. Um, preview audio, network names, set it, checking for updates. Updates I actually had to connect via the PC to do this. It may work with the updated firmware now, but I prefer doing it through the PC anyway. And various other options. We can set the video to, say, record on a five minute loop if you're wanting to use this, say, with a limited size memory card. Um, you do use quite a lot of space on the card. I think half an hour in the 4K mode worked out about 17 gigabytes. And we can go through and turn the various options on and off here as well. Um, what you do have, which you can't get through the camera itself, are we have these pro mode settings. Um, so one thing I found was shooting in car. By default, exposure balance is both. So it shows us, uh, it tries to meter based off the front and rear light output. In car that gave me a nice bright interior which I wasn't so bothered about and a completely blown out exterior uh, as we'll see in probably the first clip that I show in a minute. 
Um, so for in-car, I did try independent, but that makes the stitch very obvious because there was quite a big difference. So I would probably use the front setting in-car. So what we would see then is if we made the front very bright, um, it would then make the rear view quite dark. So if, for example, here, we can look around and see around the room. So that is front camera moving to rear camera. If we are to shine a torch at the front, and then move to the back, that actually hasn't made too big a difference because the room's quite bright. But we can see there is then a darkening of the rear and lightening again slightly. Again, this room's a little too bright for it to be obvious, uh, even with the torch shining at it. Um, but we do also have other aspects, like we can change the maximum ISO, we can exposure bias to make things brighter or darker, and so on. So there's various options in there, uh, white balance, so we can change a lot of these settings most people are going to want to keep on auto, but it is nice to have some control over them. It's just perhaps a little bit of a shame in time that uh, you can't do it all through the camera. You do have to have your phone for some of it. So next up we're going to take a look at the Verb Edit application, which is... I'm going to look at the PC version. There is a mobile app as well, but we're going to start... But that is the one I've been mainly using, so that's what we'll look at. Now here we have the verb edit application and when we plug in the camera and power it up the application will pick up the camera or should here we go and then gives us so it says verb camera detected we like to import videos um, when we do this we can say import selection and we can pick from videos on the device so we're going to just import the latest one. Um, this can take some time for longer videos, obviously, because file sizes are quite big. Being small, this one has come in nice and quickly. I'm not going to bother with the optimization for the moment. And I also have some other videos in here as well. Um, so what we can see here, we have the option for viewing experience. So we can choose to create either a 360 video, which will give viewers the opportunity to set um, to turn the camera as they watch or we can select to do a hyperframe video uh, this allows us to then um, move the camera through the piece so we can change the zoom um, and the angle either through those or by turning round as so um, we can preview the video Um, this, like I say, was shot um, in the um, linked mode for the exposure, so the outside is somewhat overblown. We can see some of the stitching around the edge here where it's trying to merge the image with close objects, um, which isn't perfect, but it's kind of good enough. It's not uh, you know, a major impediment to using the camera. And we can set angles uh, and transition between those. So say if we set add new angle save angle and then play on a few seconds and pan the camera around add new angle and then if we save angle so let's go back to the start in fact I've messed up there haven't I You can see the camera has then zoomed out from the initial and say add new angle, pan it round, save angle and then by going back to the start we should now see so this would allow us to create a video where we can direct 
the camera through the show, through the um, video rather than giving them full freedom or give them that full freedom if we wanted to do so. So you've got the option of doing both. Um, there are other features as well. So like I say, there is GPS built in on this. So we can bring in, ah, this video in particular doesn't have the metrics imported. Um, but if we look at, so this is one that I recorded today fiddling with the just inside my car with the ODB reader. So we can see here, we've got some engine stats. Um, we can load in the default, which will give us speed. And in that case, it's altitude picked up by the, uh, the GPS data. We can select that and say, actually we would like it to show the engine RPM as picked up by the OBD2 reader. Um, so there are some nice options in there. Um, we can go through and say we want to flip the video the other way up. We can mirror it, so side to side, and we can trim and split. So if we wanted to split sections out, we can also adjust the speed of the video and things like volume. The options are fairly limited, so you've got a few f transitions. You can put in a soundtrack if you want or add your own music. You can add text in. So looking at a clip recorded with the device, we can see here it's showing speed data. Uh, once again, this was shot in the wrong metering mode. Really, it should have been in forward. Uh, so initially, this is somewhat over bright. Uh, whereas once again, when we pan round to the interior view, it improves quite significantly. Um, as we move around, it does become a bit clearer. It is fairly clear that the dynamic range on the camera isn't amazing and um, so it does struggle when you have very bright and dark in the same scene uh, the metering just can't really cope with that and the sensor can't quite handle it so you will get say blown out highlights or sort of crushed shadows um, which is a bit of a shame and then moving to this second clip we can see again we're mounted in car and quality isn't amazing because effectively you're creating a 4k video um and then only viewing a small portion of it it would be better if i'd shot in the raw mode um and here you can see fairly obviously where we've had it on independent mode you have the stitch here and you can see you've got completely different metering front and rear um again if we'd just gone with the front view uh this would change a bit um so that the interior would be darker and the front would be the same. Um, it's down to sort of what you're shooting and how important the front and rear are to you. Obviously, if you're shooting through 60, the interior shot or the, the rear view shot should be fairly important still. Um, but it's quite a cool thing to have a play with. It's neat to be able to look all the way around in a in-car shot like this to be able to and particularly when i'm say traveling i mean i've been up to scotland and things like that driving around and kind of the sad thing is i've recorded some of it and you miss some of the beautiful scenery shots just because you're in a fixed angle out the front whereas this we could pan it round um and say make a quick video and put it in the 1080p mode and show sort of the beautiful scenery as you're going through a landscape rather than just being locked to that front view it also means, say, if on a track day something or anywhere else that you're using it, if something happens and you miss it and it happens in your peripheral, you can go in and edit and pull that back in, assuming it sort of stitches well and everything else. So it's a very neat thing. Um, it's something that I'm looking possibly to do some car videos, um, possibly on a separate channel. Um, which I'm looking to set up because I have a few cars which I think may be of interest. So if people um, would find that interesting, let me know and I'll be sure to post up a link. If you want to take a look at the camera, I'll post details below in the description. Um, it's not cheap at £650 and like I say, it's not perfect, but it's a very good action cam for sort of this all-round visibility, something a bit different. And I would certainly recommend taking a look at it and checking it out if you think it would be useful for you. Um, like I say, if you've got any comments or questions, please ask below and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more content from us in the future. Thanks for watching.